Welcome to the CA Unified Infrastructure Management Dashboard videos. This is the fourth in a series of five videos that will show you the basics of working with dashboards. This video will show you how to set visual data cues to the dashboard widgets so that the dashboard display becomes meaningful. We're picking up where we left off in video 3, viewing the live mode and viewing the widgets that were created to show default properties. Default properties aren't going to give us the detail we are looking for from the alarm widgets. So now we'll set some properties for the widgets to fine-tune our dashboard and make the data display more meaningful. From here, we'll navigate back to the edit mode by hovering over the black tab, and then over to the gear icon for options, and select the pencil icon for edit mode. We won't get much information about the values behind the alarm widgets if the widgets are always green. So let's define a color map and thresholds for each widget, so that the color of the widgets change with specific values. To do so, select the widget and then click on the Properties tab to view its properties. Expand the color menu by clicking on the color header. Click the plus sign to add a color row to the color map. A new row will appear. Then click on the new row to expand the color map. Select the color by sliding the color bar on the right up or down, to find the appropriate color range. Then select the desired color inside of the color field by clicking on it. The hexadecimal value for the color will be automatically entered into the color row information. If you know the hexadecimal code for the desired color, you can enter it directly beside the sample square, and the appropriate color will be selected. If you want to reduce the opacity of the color, you can do that with the opacity slider on the right side of the color map. Continue to change the settings until you like the colors, and then click anywhere on the canvas to exit the color map. Next we'll assign a value of 80% as a warning threshold for CPU usage. This means that, if CPU usage is below 80%, the square stays green. For a value of 80% and above, the square turns yellow. Now we've created a color for the warning threshold. By adding another row, picking another color, and assigning a threshold of 90%, we can define a critical threshold for CPU usage. At 90% and above, the widget will turn red. Because the colors are replaced as the usage value goes up, there's no need to define a range for each color. For ascending values, green remains green until replaced by yellow, and yellow remains yellow until replaced by red. The reverse is true for descending values. Red is replaced by yellow when the value drops below the critical threshold, and yellow is replaced by green when the value drops below the warning threshold. Continue through the same steps to define a similar color map for the disk usage alarm. If you want to use the same colors for the disk alarm, you can copy the hexadecimal number for the colors and paste them into the new rows. For the disk widget, we'll set the warning threshold at 40,000 MB based on the system's installed disk space, and the critical threshold at 60,000 MB. Obviously, these values will depend on the system that you are monitoring. And finally, Go through the same steps to define a similar color map for the memory alarm. For the memory widget, we'll set the warning threshold at 6000 MB, again based on the system's installed memory, and the critical threshold at 7000 MB. Now the alarm widget properties for all three alarms have been defined to give us meaningful data. The gauges and line chart reflect the actual values being returned, so color is not critical. If you wish to change them, you can do so in the same way that colors were picked for the alarms. If you associate multiple data sources with one line chart, each data series will be assigned a different default color. You can change these colors to make them stand out by selecting a data series and changing its properties. When viewing properties for the line chart widget, pull down the series menu and click the name of a data series. You'll also see other options that are available to explore. By selecting the disk space gauge, you'll see additional formatting options for this widget. You can change the orientation of the gauge with the vertical toggle button. Turn tick marks on and off. And turn labels on and off.
scroll down to see the color options. You can also assign different colors to threshold values, so that the bar changes colors to match the alarm states. In this case, the gauge bar will be green up to the warning threshold and yellow up to the critical threshold. The same is true of the CPU gauge. If you have lines in your dashboard, you can set their properties under the line menu. If you want to change the lines to arrows, click on the arrows toggle button and select from the options that appear. For anchored lines, you can change the location of the anchor points using the anchor drop-down menus. This is useful if you change the layout of the dashboard but don't want to delete, and then reinsert existing connectors. In this case, changing the properties of the widgets hasn't changed the display design, but viewing it in the live view mode gives us the latest values for each widget. This is what our dashboard alarms look like when threshold limits have been breached, indicating a disk threshold warning, and the memory threshold, showing critical. The last video to view in this five-part series is, Publish the Dashboard. You can also learn more about creating and using dashboards within UIM by registering for the course titled, CA Unified Infrastructure Management, Advanced Presentations.